Maybe if Cassie Clare comes out with a new series that's outside the Shadowhunters, I'm lying. I'll probably never read a Cassie Clare book. One of the blurbs is as ferociously compelling as Susan Collins' The Hunger Games. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't care. Everybody, my name is Chama or Chi, and today I'm going to be doing a book on haul. I just cleared out my shelves, organized my books, and there's so many books that I have just been holding on to dear life for for absolutely no reason. So I know I'm never gonna read it, they don't even look pretty. There's no reason for me to keep these books, so I'm gonna unhaul them. I know there are tons of other people who would rather read them, who will read them, who will like them more than I like or want to read these books. So let's get into the unhaul. Alright, this is the first stack. Ugh. So the first book I'm going to be unhauling is Fifty Shades of Grey. I read this when I was way too young to be reading this. I know I was in high school and I read this book and I actually read all three of them. I'm actually pretty sure I have all three of them. My sister might have the other two, but <laughs> like I, I <laughs> what do I say? So, so this is the thing. I never understand fan fiction that's supposed to be made into like books because this, if you told me this was Twilight fan fiction, I wouldn't get it. I don't get it. How was it Twilight fan fiction? I guess when it starts to like get to the climax, climax of the book. I guess you can see how that's kind of similar to the way Ish went down in Twilight, but this did not remind me of Twilight in a time when I was looking to get over my Twilight hangover. This did not do it. This was weird. This didn't make sense. I didn't like any of the characters. Christian Grey was not hot in my mind. The girl, she seemed Bella-like, which was just three strikes against her. So I have no need, reason to keep these. I don't want them anymore. So I'm getting rid of Fifty Shades of Grey because it's not worth it. This next book, I'm, see, I have this thing where I'm very indecisive and I don't actually know who I am and I don't know what I want in life and that is why I think in my top 21 books I want to read in 2021 this was the first book I talked about and that is Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. You see I when I first got on booktube I was all about like the hype train. If someone hypes it up I'm gonna get it. I like to be a part of something so I got Nevernight and I like the cover. I really like the cover but then first of all as far as I know, Jay Kristoff is a white man, and the first kind of blurb on the back says Japanese steampunk novel. That's interesting. That's that's an interesting dichotomy as a white man writing a Japanese book, not a book with Japanese characters. Like this is a Japanese book, Japanese steampunk. So that's interesting. And I heard that this is supposed to be a young adult, and it's supposed to start a 16-year-old girl, and she gets into a lot of kind of like weirdly sexual situations that are very explicitly described in this book. I find that like I'm very critical of like young adult books that have kind of like over sexualized teenagers just knowing me and knowing the young adult books I've read recently and knowing that how some of their sexual situations I feel like this is gearing on the way of adult but because I know it's a young adult I'm just like no so I'm going to give this book away maybe to my to my sister and probably not if I don't like it, she probably not gonna like it, but I will not be reading this book. The next book is an arc from 2010, back to my book blogger days, and it is Captivate, which I think is a sequel of Need. I absolutely loved the first book back 10, 11 years ago in 2010, and then I have two arcs of these, and I don't need two arcs. I don't even have a finished copy of the book, but I definitely don't need two arcs. And it's like, it's a very old book. I feel like someone else will benefit from getting this if I give it away. The next book is a middle grade book, I believe and it's blurred by Neil Gaiman and Scott Westerfield who I absolutely love but it's called Little Brother by Cory Doctorow. Um, I'm pretty sure it's middle grade. I don't know what it's about. Something about a terrorist attack and a teenage hacker. I don't know this doesn't interest me at all. I actually just have it because it was one of my books that I had when I went back home to my parents house. So I got some of my books that I kept there from undergrad. This is one of the books my mom was gonna throw it away. I'm like who throws away books in this economy? She was just like you don't need this anymore I'm gonna throw it away. Who does that so that's the only reason I took this just so I can unhaul it in a place that isn't in my parents garbage can so little brother this can also go another book from my teenage days this is Teen Idol by Meg Cobbett or Meg Cabot um I don't know what this is about but I just it's about it's called Teen Idol and I don't know some of Meg Cobbett's older books don't hit now like they used to and I'm not willing to find out which category this one falls into so I'm going to unhaul this I don't need this um someone else will like it someone who's actually in their teens will probably enjoy it more than I. The next book is a book that I have no idea how I got. I, I can only guess that it was cheap at a used bookstore, but it's called Bloodstone by Gillian Phillip. One of the blurbs is as 
gorgeously compelling as Susan Collins' The Hunger Games. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't care. I, I just don't care. I know for a fact I will not read this book. So it looks like it's like an epic fantasy. I think it's an adult epic fantasy, but it's compared to Hunger Games. So who knows? There's no age in the description. I will not be reading this. Someone else who likes things like this probably will enjoy it more than I. Beautiful Darkness, the sequel to Beautiful Creatures. The only reason I'm unhauling this, I haven't read this book, but I have two copies for whatever reason. Probably will read it. I read the first one a long time ago and I never touched the second one, but I probably will reread the series this year, but I have no need for two copies. This may be my sister's. I may have just took it from her, but I don't need two copies of this book. The next book is The Ancient Magnus Bride and is book 10 in this manga. It's actually a a hardcover manga. Have you ever heard of a hardcover manga? I haven't. I definitely keep it because it's a hardcover manga, but like I already have this volume. I accidentally ordered a duplicate volume, so I effed up. But yeah, this is a great manga series. I definitely recommend it. It's really, really great. And I would love to keep this as like a collector's edition just because it's hardcover, but I really have no need for two copies of the same book. That's just not my portion. Other people probably really like it. I don't like having multiple copies, so I'll be giving this one away as well. No, but this one is Deadly Little Secrets. This one is an older YA book as well. It's just an old school YA romantic suspense book. So if someone is killed in a car accident, mysterious boy, junior high, or no, junior year at school, Um, they come together. It's one of those books, like, you know, like Hush Hush, like Fallen. Like, it's part of that era of like YA bad boy who's brooding and mean, but except to you, he saves you, you know, that era of books. And I have zero desire to reinvest myself into that timeline. It was good for a time, but now it's over. This one is a book that I was actually so excited for. I was so excited for Ash Princess. It just sounded so good. But I got to like, when I was reading this, I don't know where I got to. I might have gotten to 100 pages. I might have gotten to 100 pages in this book and I could smell it. I could see it. I could feel it in my bones, the love triangle. I could feel it. It was coming. And no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not. I have, I'm not reading a love triangle. I hate that trope enough to put a book down if I'm reading it and it has a love triangle because like I don't wanna be invested into two main male leads who are all vying for the attention of a girl who has business to mind, who has things to do, who has a mission of her own and here you are on the sidelines bugging her. I don't need that, I hate love triangles and I could smell it. And then, then I went on Goodreads and then one of the questions from the author was like, does this have a love triangle? She was just like, yes, it's a love triangle all up in this series. And I was like, Laura Shabaston, say less. I don't need this book, I don't want it. Anti-Love Triangle 2021, that is my theme for this year. Okay, next stack. Okay, the next is Legend by Mary Lou. I've had this book for so long and I tried to read it. I got pretty, oh, there's a bookmark in it. I got to page 60 and I just know I'm not gonna read this book. I am just not invested. I got to page 60 and I had to really like force myself to like, hey Chama, do a chapter, like read a chapter. And I was like, I don't want to. I really don't. And people adore this series. Like my favorite book tours love this series to death and I could not get into it. Like what was it? It just was not for me. It just wasn't for me. So I know someone else would enjoy the series or this book a lot more than I did try to. I will blah, blah, blah. So so the next two books are two copies of the same books. Again, I don't know how I end up with two copies of the same book. I'm positive for this one. I stole one from my sister. So I'll definitely give one of them back to her. None of them have either of our names in it. So that is City of Ashes. Okay, the thing about City of Ashes is that I'm never gonna read it. I'm never gonna read it. And I've had it, I read City of Bones and City of Bones, I'm gonna keep, I'm not gonna unhaul City of Bones just cause City of Bones was really one of my intro to YA, intro to reading books. So it has a special place in my heart. And and I just remember there's one character, I remember, I think his name is Magnus or Magnet, Magnus, who I absolutely adore, who I absolutely adore. I absolutely adore Magnus. So I'm gonna keep City of Bones for nostalgia reasons, but I will never read this book. So just because, spoiler here, I'm not, whatever. I don't care how they remedy the whole incest trope. I don't know how they remedy that, but I don't wanna find out and I don't wanna go through having to read this book to get to finding out how they dealt with that trope. So I don't wanna read this. Cassandra Clare, honestly, that, that just didn't need to happen. That just didn't need to happen. And even me as a child reading City of Bones knew that that didn't need to happen and knew that I didn't want to continue on after that happened. So City of Ashes can go. And on that same leg, I have 
Clockwork Prince, which is book two in the Infernal Devices. And not only have I not read the second and third book in the City of Bones trilogy, I haven't read the first book in the Infernal Devices yet. I have the second book. I'm not gonna read it. Maybe if Cassie Clare comes out with a new series that's outside of the Shadowhunters, I'm lying. I'll probably never read a Cassie Clare book. This is a cool cover. I really enjoy this cover. I like this cover. I wish I had any sort of motivation to read it, but I don't. It's got, they got, they have no place on my shelves. But we have Blackbird, which is the first book in the Blackbird manga. And the only reason I'm unhealing, well, okay. There's multiple reasons why I'm unhauling this, but the only reason I'm actually unhauling like this copy is because I have a duplicate. I have two of these copies. And second of all, I don't think I still like the series. I do need to reread all of them because I forgot everything that happens, but it sounds like it's one of those weird, like, torture. Not torture, but like, I don't know. Like, look at the cover. Like, it seems like one of those weird, like, painful romance things that they used to do in YA a lot, like, you know? And I don't know if I still like it, but I don't need a duplicate copy of any book, so I'm giving it away Blackbird. Um, the next book is These Rebel Waves by Sarah Rosh, and I, again, have two of these. I have two copies of these, one in hardcover, one in softcover. I'm going to keep the hardcover one, but I don't even know what this is about. It's about three people. I mean, two of them are boys, one of them's a girl, and I hope there's no love triangle in this, but I don't really know what this is about. I just know I have two copies, and I... I don't need two copies, so I'm unhauling this one. Continuing on with my Wattapod fanfiction unhaul after, was it, 55 Shades of Grey? Um, Awake. So this is apparently also a Wattapod fanfiction. I'm not against fanfiction. I am not anti-fanfiction. I adore fanfiction. Fanfiction is fun. Fanfiction is fun and people take it too seriously. It's just fun. As long as you're not doing problematic things, as long as you're not doing anything to disrespect a person, disrespect their character, disrespect them in any way, um, I think it's all good fun. So this is Wattapod published. I didn't even know Wattapod published things, but it's by Wattapod Sensation, Natasha Preston, and it is a thriller. Um, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I'm not gonna read this. There's nothing about the description. There's nothing about anything that makes me want to read it. Um, the blurb on the back says, of course the dress was white. This is what I'm supposed to die in, I thought. Not many people knew what their last outfit would be. That's not gripping enough. It's not doing it for me. It's, you give me more, give me more, and you, they didn't give me more, so this one has to go. Um, the next book is a book I actually saved from my last haul, and that is Beautiful Disasters. Um, they say this is like, listen, intense and dangerous addictive. No, this again goes with that whole old school YA trope of the hush hush, the fallen, the deadly little secrets, all of those books where there's a brooding boy who like, you know, people think is like a drug addict and he saves a girl and then he's really mean to her, but she still falls in love. We're over that. We're over that. We've moved on. We moved on. 2010, stay in 2010, 2005, stay in 2005. We don't want you anymore. We don't want your YA trope. So do for disaster can go because people say the relationship here is really problematic and I don't want that. Last book that I'm going to be in hauling is Rule by J. Crow. See, I read like 99% of this book, but I swear the force of God, nothing literally was just like, you don't you don't need to read, finish that last one per se. So I really got to like page 380 and then shit started hitting the fan in a way that I was just like, I'm not here for it. I'm not here for it. It don't make sense. I'm not here for it. It was, it was okay. Okay. It was okay for the first like 300 so pages. 350 pages that's a lie the premise is weird so i don't remember too much but it has to do with a guy and his like brother or his best friend's girl and they fall in love and then his brother or best friend's girl comes back and doesn't know that they were like fianced it was much it was much and not in a good way not in a good way the drama i wasn't here for it it wasn't good so i do not want this um yeah so those are all the books I'm going to be unhauling. I'm glad I'm unhauling them. I think I have like two empty spaces in my bookshelf, which is not a lot, but it's something. So you tell me if you've read any of these books, if you actually like these books, if you for some reason still continued on with Cassie Clare's books, how did you do it? If you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll talk to you guys later.